Someone once asked how you can tell if you're making progress in your meditation. And one of the answers is if when the mind slips off, you get faster and faster at bringing it back. Notice the answer is the mind doesn't slip off at all. It is You're expected to slip off. It's a normal part of the practice. It's a normal part of the training. The question is being more alert to what's going on and being quicker to remedy the situation when <clears throat> when you've slipped off the topic, slipped off the breath. So an important part of learning how to med meditate is learning, well, learning how to fall. They say when you start learning Aikido, the first thing they teach you is how to fall without hurting yourself. The purpose being is it makes you less and less afraid to fall, less and less damaged, of course, by the fall, but also less afraid to fall, and as a result, less likely to fall. So the trick when you meditate is learning how to bring the mind back with minimum amount of recrimination, a minimum amount of self-criticism. Just a simple observation. I wasn't here to, haven't come here to think about next week's schedule or last night's fiascos or whatever. I'm here to focus on the breath. And leave those other things and come back. Learn how to do it with a minimum of the knots that most people tend to tie their minds into. Because all too often when we make an effort at something that doesn't come naturally, the easiest thing in the world seems to be to slip and fall and then just go with it. In other words, go with the fall. That's called not knowing how to fall. The trick is when you fall, noticing that there is a certain amount of momentum, but you don't have to give in to the momentum. You'll notice this when you've, say, made a vow to give up something for a particular period of time. Last summer it was popular to give up chocolate in the evening. And there comes a temptation. So what's wrong with a little bit of chocolate? Well, there's nothing really wrong. And there's one point where the mind makes a decision to drop the vow, go for the chocolate. And all too often we assume that once that decision has been made, it can't be unmade. You just kind of follow through with the momentum. But it is possible to unmake that decision in the next moment, or two minutes later, three minutes later. This is called learning learning how to fall properly. In other words, you don't give in to the momentum that leads you away. You realize you're always free to change your mind again. It's when you notice yourself slipping off the breath. Don't just give in to the momentum of having slipped. Catch yourself. Okay, I can just turn around. And you'd be amazed at how quickly you can turn around. And the mind will come up with other reasons, say, oh no, you can't turn around now, you've committed yourself. Well, that's interesting, you commit yourself to that kind of thing, and don't feel that you've committed yourself to your meditation. All kinds of tricks the mind plays on itself. And it's learning how to see through those tricks, not believe them, and have a few tricks of your own. There's a part of the mind that says, well, it's a lot more natural to take the easy way out. But that begs the question of nature versus nurture. And the mind has certain habits that it's developed, and you can go to a psychotherapist and they can point out very clearly how particular habits got developed by a particular way your parents raised you or particular experiences you had when you were a kid. That means the habits are not necessarily natural. They're there, they're ingrained, but you can change them. You can nurture the mind in the other direction, which is what we're doing as we train it. We're re-educating the mind. 
And not only are we teaching it how to stay on one topic as we stay with the breath, but also we're teaching it how to come back to the breath more quickly. How to catch yourself as the mind begins to let go of the breath and latch onto something else. And then just turn right around without any problem at all and latch back onto the breath. This way you learn to discipline yourself without the harshness that we usually associate with the word discipline. Just a more matter-of-fact way of doing things, a more matter-of-fact way of dealing with your mind. And you find that it cuts through a lot of the garbage. And because it cuts through those things, there are fewer hooks for your defilements to hang, hang on to. And instead of dealing with abstractions uh, such as my personality, my character, to the way I am, keep focused on the present moment. When that decision was made, it was made in total freedom. And you can make another decision in total freedom. And you find that when you clear away your concept of who you are, your self-image, which is another hiding ground for all kinds of defilements, the playing field is a lot clearer, and there are a lot fewer places for the defilements to hide. I think I told you the story about the, the woman in Laguna Beach who had been to a retreat where she had been taught that the way to bring the practice into daily life was to see daily life as an interplay of the absolute and the relative. And after trying that for two or three days, she had a very convoluted question about how you do this. And I must admit the question was so convoluted I couldn't understand it. But the problem was obvious. The more abstract the abstraction, the more difficult it is to see your way clearly in the path, and the easier it is to get yourself tied up in knots. We think of abstractions as sort of clearing the playing ground and being nice and neat, but actually there are lots of veils over what's actually happening. You have the mind right here with the breath, and it can decide to stay with the breath or it can decide to move away. It's as simple as that. You've made up your mind you're going to stick with the precepts. Okay, you keep deciding with every moment whether you're going to stick with that vow or not. keep things on simple terms, basic terms, down to earth, no-nonsense, straight-talking terms in the mind. Without bringing issues about your past, bringing issues about your self-image into complicated matters, you find it's a lot easier to stay on the path. It's a lot easier to bring yourself back when you fall off, because there are fewer convolutions in the, in the terrain that you're falling on. So when you're meditating, when you're practicing, not only when you're meditating, but when you're practicing in every aspect of the path, try to keep things as simple as possible, as down-to-earth, moment-to-moment as possible. Remember when I was staying with the John Fu, and sometimes he'd ask me to do things like, tonight stay up, sit and meditate all night long. Oh my gosh, I can't do that. I haven't had, didn't get enough sleep last night, I had a tiring day. He said, well, is it going to kill you? Well, no. He said, then you can do it. As simple as that. Of course, it wasn't easy, but it was simple. And when you keep things simple, it, makes, it does eventually make it a lot easier. And then you just stay with that moment-to-moment -moment decision, not thinking about all night, all night, all night. You just think about okay, this breath, this breath, this breath. When you've made up your mind, you're going to stick with the precepts, and you're going to be away from a Dharma community for a long time. Don't think about how long you're going to be away. Just think this moment, this moment, the decision I'm making right now, right now. That's how you bring the meditation into daily life. Keep things simple. Strip them down. Once things are stripped down in the mind, then the defilements don't have many places to hide. And when you do fall, you fall in a place that's easier to get up from. 
have to give in to the momentum of the fall. You would catch yourself and re retain your balance right away. My mother once said that the thing that first attracted her to my father was he was having a meal at their house. My father had been a friend of her brother's. He brought him, brought him home from college one time. And as he was eating, he knocked a glass of milk off the table, and he caught the glass before it hit the floor. And she said, that's why she married him. It sounds kind of crazy, but it says something very interesting. And it's the kind of quality you want. And as a meditator, you knock yourself over, well, you can pick yourself right back up and try to keep it as simple as that. 